Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Rocket Kane 120 Amo. A small, interesting, comfortable, and reasonably feature-packed gaming mouse from Rocket that comes in at around $69 or 59 of your English pounds. This weighs in at 89 grams, has a 16,000 max DPI, two RGB lighting zones, 34% uh, more cable flex. <laughs> than other mice and uh, this is an unboxing video to give you an idea of what the mouse is like to use stick with me all the way through because you get to see close-ups of the mouse hear the sounds of the clicks and see the software and the software is where the Rocket Kane 120 shines and that's due to a number of different settings and features within it now this mouse has a number of different buttons on it you'll see from the box and as we unbox it it has two thumb buttons as well as a dpi switching button on top and the traditional mouse wheel and that might not sound like a lot but there's actually a bit of software that basically doubles up the number of buttons on the mouse and allows you to customize it in a lot of different ways it's really cool the cane is also uh, obviously a right-handed mouse because you've got the buttons on the left-hand side and it's quite compact and perhaps initially looks cheap but has a nice sort of rubberized finish to the top and to the buttons and it actually is a really good performer for the price and it's been quite nice to use. The RGB lighting as you'll see a bit later on is really bright and also interesting, especially when paired with something like the Rocket Vulcan 122 that I've been using at the moment because the AMO lighting syncs across those two devices and makes for some pretty awesome RGB lighting on your disc. It's also an affordable gaming mouse with numerous features. As I said, it packs up to 16 thousand dpi as a maximum which is pretty high and comparable with more high-end mice from other brands and it also has a number of programmable buttons and you can have multiple dpi switching levels it comes with a nice braided cable which i'm always a fan of to prevent snagging on your desk quite a long cable i'll leave all the specifications in the description in case you're curious as well as links to buy and check out the official uh, download and specs page for the download for the Swarm software, which you'll need. But you'll see the mouse itself is reasonably understated and very titchy, and you'll see my hand on top of it in a minute. It's quite a small mouse, so if you're looking for a small one, this is probably a good choice. I reviewed a, another Rocket mouse in the past previously, which was considerably larger, and I would definitely recommend checking that out, and I'll link to that in the description if you're a larger-handed gamer. I am got quite big hands and I'm quite clumsy, so I like big mice generally with thumb rests and finger rests and stuff, but this one is actually really nice. The mouse wheel is textured, as you can see. There's also RGB lighting on it. There is a bit of sideways flex on it, you can see here, which is unfortunate because it isn't side-to-side -side click. Um, but it doesn't necessarily degrade the overall quality or the usability of the mouse. Up close in the middle, just in front and behind the mouse wheel, you'll see a nice lot of brushed steel aluminium looking finish on it. It looks really nice. The sounds of the mouse are also very satisfying and it feels good in the hand. It responds really well for gaming and it's nice to use for general browsing and working purposes as well. The customization and flexibility within the software means that you can set this mouse up to respond in a variety of different ways depending on your preference. The side buttons aren't recognized by games though, so I've been programming those to do the usual things that I'd like to do in games, whether that's using it in a battle royale game or front mouse button, uh, side button to spot enemies or perhaps to activate a special maneuver or to reload a weapon or something simple like that. You can also set up and program macros, reassign buttons, and choose from a variety of different things that I'll cover in a little while. It has a satisfying and loud click to it, as you can hear. Uh, the mouse wheel is actually relatively quiet. Up close and recorded like this, it sounds quite loud, but here you can see the sort of brushed aluminium 
finish that I was talking about, or brushed steel. It is actually a plastic, I believe, but it looks like metal and it's got uh, quite a nice look to it in that way. It only has two RGB lighting zones. You can see one around the wheel and one around the logo itself. They are very bright though, but if you're looking for a mouse with a lot of RGB lighting, this probably isn't it because there's no under lighting and there's no lighting on the side or anything like that. That said, it does get very bright and you can adjust the brightness within the Rockout Swarm software and customize that uh, and it's easy to turn up and down especially if you've got the Vulcan which you can adjust easily on the fly and it'll adjust everything that you're using which is really handy. The cabling is actually reasonably long as well, not had any problems with that, although I often prefer wireless mice because you don't have a snag on it, but for a reasonably affordable wired mouse this has been comfortable to use and has worked well. definitely have enjoyed using it. I don't think it will replace my daily driver but that's mostly because I like to have a larger mouse. If you're looking for something that's affordable, capable and feature rich then this might well be it because it is pretty cheap compared to other uh, mice with similar specifications from other brands. Now in a second I'm going to dive into the software so stick with me now as I show you what goes on in there. Now this is the Rockout Swarm software and you can control most Rockout products from here but you'll see immediately there are a number of different customization options in here. You can change things like your vertical scroll speed and you get information on what each of those does. You'll also note if you see a little blip where the software seems to be timing out it's actually automatically applying the changes I'm making on the software to the mouse and you can either set it to do that or you can save them manually. You'll also note there are different profile slots below so you can have different profiles set up for the mouse as well that you can switch between so you can set it to do whatever you want to in different modes. You can change things like the double click speed, the windows pointer speed and all sorts of other things. And then you can test those within this as well. The main thing for me on this first settings page though is the DPI switcher. You can see there are five DPI levels as default and the DPI button on top will switch between them. You can also customize them between 50 and 16,000 um, or between those five. 16,000 is ridiculously fast but you'll know when you press the DPI button it switches between them and you can see that happening within the software. So starting off at 400, 800, 1200, 1600, 3200 and whatever you set those levels to you can then press that button and switch between them. You'll notice also there's a tick at the end of each row so you could reduce it if you only say wanted two or three different profiles. The next one is the button presets. Now there are a number of different options in here and this is where it becomes particularly interesting for me. You can see you have eight buttons in total but you can also get an easy shift function. Now the easy shift functionality and rocket stuff is really interesting. Basically what that means is with an extra press of a key you can then activate easy shift mode which then basically you press and hold in the easy shift button so it acts in a sort of way same way as control within windows if you're doing control and then c to copy then control v to paste it does the same sort of thing so the easy shift button that i've set up here as uh, button number seven so it's the far down thumb button once you press and hold that you can then activate the secondary functionality for the other keys or other buttons on the mouse. And this works the same as it does on uh, Rock Hat's keyboards as well. So it's a really nice way of basically getting extra buttons on your mouse on the fly without having to switch between profiles or anything else. All you've got to do is press and hold a button and then press another one. So to show that off quickly I am pressing and holding that on and then I'm rolling the mouse wheel. You can see four and five of the mouse wheel up and down and I've set them to volume up and down on media playback. A simple little thing but it means you can easily change volumes. Now obviously once you're in this mode you cannot change the easy shift key to be something else. You can't have two things on that but every other key is then programmable so you're nearly doubling up on the number of functions. The next one I'm doing is I'm setting a program to open on the easy shift. So you can set any program you like, pick from here, 
to open by pressing the easy shift button and then pressing any other button. There are loads of different options to choose from and obviously you can customize this the way you want. You can record macros and uh, open programs, do media controls, get macros from specific games. Here for this example I'm setting it to open Notepad++ because it's just a really easy thing to do. But you could launch Steam or a particular game or Discord or something equally as useful. And obviously that's going to vary depending on how you're using it. And you might have set up different profiles for Windows versus gaming. So for gaming you might want to launch Discord, but if you're in Windows perhaps you want to open Chrome, something like that. You see you've got a long list of different functionality you can get. You've got basic functions with double clicks and up, up and down cycling on your DPI, open the internet browser, using the internet browser, going between different, different things, all sorts of stuff. Now the Rocket functions also include easy shift mode. So this is a specific set level of lower DPI. In this case, press the easy shift button and then press the extra key that you've assigned to, so that I've used the front thumb button, and you're putting it into a very low 200 DPI. Without changing the DPI, this is an on-the-fly temporary use of a lower DPI setting. It's similar to the sniper mode we've seen in other mice. Basically, it allows you to very temporarily adjust the DPI level to be a lot smaller. This means that in an FPS game, for example, you can have a much more accurate aim for a temporary period of time and allows you to pull off some pretty awesome shots. And it's also cool that you can do that and you can customize the levels. So it could be 200, 400, 600 or a specific level that you want. Maybe you want a moment where it's really fast for some reason. Another thing you can do is get it to open specific folders. So if there's a folder on your computer you regularly want to access, for, for me for example, as a driver I stick all my current videos that I'm working on, I can just two clicks and that drive, drive folder is then open and I can access those videos really easily. So there's loads of different options. You can see this software makes the mouse even more customizable. Now on a lighting standpoint you obviously have the standard fully lit heart heartbeat, breathing, blinking, and other things like that. The lighting on this, as I said, isn't going to blow your socks off. It is, however, really bright. You'll note the standard modes have a various themes to them, and if you want to look at my Vulcan 122 review that I did with the keyboard, you'll see a similar sort of setup in terms of the colors. You can either have themes, or you can choose your own specific colors. My favourite though is definitely the AMO Intelligent Lighting. That lighting syncs up between different Rocket devices and also reacts when you're using it in different ways and it reacts across the keyboard and the mouse if you're using them together and it just looks cool. The blend and the way it dips and comes back up and changes colour is really nice. Customization options on it are limited, same as I said on the Vulcan 122, not amazing, which is why the AMO Intelligent Lighting is pretty neat. Uh, I'm trying to show it reacting here, but it was being a bit finicky. Um, it does, however, generally work really well and is really interesting and really nice. It's got a really nice reactive color to it. it change, the AMO Reactive Intelligent Lighting System basically changes color slowly over time but then it also changes based on your use of the mouse or, or accompanying peripherals. So you've got a constant change in it, which is really nice. In the advanced settings, you'll see you can also adjust things like the polling rate, the zero debounce, which basically allows the mouse to be clicked even quicker and react more quickly to your presses. You can do distance control, angle snapping, and all sorts of other things. To be honest, most of these things are left alone, but it does show you the functionality that you can dive into and play around with. One of the other things I really like about this is the DPI change. So obviously you've got those five different DPI modes that you can switch between. This one tells you which level you're on with a simple audio voiceover to tell you between them. 400 DPI. 800 DPI. 1,200 DPI, 1,600 DPI, 3,200 DPI. This functionality is really useful because you're obviously not going to know which mode you're on. There's no book, uh, nothing on the mouse to indicate which one you're in. And if you have them set to massively different levels, you don't suddenly want to go from 400 DPI to 16,000. 
without much warning. So the ability to set it to tell you when you've changed is also really cool, unless you want to do recordings or you're capturing game footage and you don't want people hearing that necessarily. But it's a nice little functionality to have. So all in all, the Lil Rocket Kane 120 Amo has been a real pleasure to have around. It's a very comfortable, very capable and interesting mouse with plenty of different functionality options, some really rich features and some awesome software that can allow you to customise it in a variety of different ways. Hope you found this video useful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting or hilarious. Be sure to subscribe and check out these other videos as well as taking a look in the description for links and information you might find useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything you'd like to see extra about this and have a great life.